Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday School. So today we're going to be talking about belonging to a community. What do you think I mean when I say community? A community is a group of people with something in common living in a specific area. Let's think of some of the communities that we belong to. So currently, I belong to the Elks and Rotary Clubs here in Cadillac. I live in a neighborhood. When I was your age, I was a Cub Scout and eventually uh, moved on to Boy Scouts. I was on a bowling team. I played the tuba in band. All those are examples of belonging to a community. What communities do you belong to? And here's a community that we all belong to. Can you guess what that community is? That's right. It's our church community. But you know what? Our church is just one part of the whole Christian community. God calls us into one great big family together, no matter who we are or where we live. How does it feel to be part of a community? I think it feels pretty cool, actually, to belong to a community for a couple of reasons. First, it provides us with a sense of belonging to something that is bigger than ourselves. And second, it's simply good to have people know us and care about us. Now, I have one more question for you regarding communities. How do we remember that we are part of a community? Well, if you play soccer or baseball or any other team sport, you have to wear a uniform. When I was in high school, my school colors were black and gold, so everybody knew I was from Stilling Heights High School. Sharing the common traditions, uh, like we do at Christmas and Easter, or even uh, when our families celebrate birthdays, those traditions and celebrations uh, distinguish us and make us part of a unique uh, community. There are things around our church that remind us that we too are part of the church community. So I brought in a couple things to show you. One of those things is, of course, the cross. Oh, let me get the angle right. So this is my uh, Celtic cross that was given to me when I left my uh, previous church and came here to Cadillac. And uh, this cross, uh, of course, is a reminder that uh, Jesus not only died for us, but he also rose for us. And uh, the, this is specific cross is a Celtic cross. And what's special about that is it gets its origins from the Scottish and Irish uh, early cultures. And uh, Presbyterianism, which is what we are here at this church, uh, comes from, uh, gets its origins from Scotland. So in our church and in other Presbyterian churches, it's common to see not only a cross, but a Celtic cross. And what makes it a Celtic cross is the circle uh, that is around around the center of the cross. Another symbol that I like to use, and I'm trying to see if I have it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, when when I do baptisms, you'll see me uh, pull out this shell, and um, what what I use it for is I use it as a scoop. I um, oh, there we go. I, I scoop it in the uh, baptismal font uh, or bowl that's filled with water, and I use this to pour water over the baby or child or even an adult's head uh, at the time of baptism. So this, too, is a, is a pretty cool uh, symbol of the church. And then I'm sure you've seen some of these around. These are rocks that uh, Miss Elaine has painted for us here at the church. And on the top of the rock there, uh, you can see a symbol uh, right, right here. And, and this is a very um, familiar Christian symbol that represents the three persons um, in our triune God. And when I say that, um, it, it represents the, oh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, which you'll hear me say a lot, almost every Sunday in church, uh, I will say, uh, usually when I finish a sermon or finish a prayer, I always say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And of course, when I say Son, I'm referring to Jesus. 
another symbol of our community, which Miss Lane painted on this rock as well. And this, this is our church logo. And I'm not sure if you can tell what that is, but the larger circle with the uh, six circles in the middle, uh, this is our big rose window in the back of the sanctuary. Uh, if you face the balcony, um, you'll see it. And within each circle uh, is artwork depicting Jesus and some of the uh, stories that we have of Jesus in our Bible. And of course, the FPC is for First Presbyterian Church. So these are just some of the symbols that remind us that we too are part of a community here at the church. Now, before I share our story with you today, I think that we ought to pray. Now, I need your help in this morning's prayer. So every time I say part of the prayer, I'll end with help us remember. And that's where I need your help. I need you to respond with, we love you, oh God. Okay, Let, let's give it a try. Let's pray. Dear God, no matter where we go, help us to remember. We love you, O oh God. No matter how we feel, help us to remember. We love you, O oh God. No matter what time it is, help us to remember. We love you, O oh God. No matter who we are with, help us to remember. We love you, O oh God. No matter what happens, help us to remember, we love you, O oh God. And let us say together, Amen. Now, in our Bible story today, we're going to read about how God's people were about to go into a brand new land. And the people there didn't want, I'm sorry, didn't worship God. God wanted the people to always remember that God loved them and what they were to love, and that they were to love and to serve God. Now Moses brought the people a message from God to remind them they were God's family. Now for those of you who uh, are older and have the Spark NRSV Bible, I want you to turn to page 198 and look for the verse in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And for the rest of us, uh, I invite you to take out your Spark Story Bible, and let's turn to page 100. And today's story is called, A Message from God. Moses was talking to the Israelites before they moved into their new country. Moses said, come here, I have a message from God. Everyone turned to listen to Moses. This is what God says, said Moses. There is only one God, and we are part of God's family. Love God with everything you say, think, and do. The people nodded. They were thankful for the new country God was giving them. But how would they remember God is in this new home? What if they forgot? Moses said, teach your children about God. Talk about God at home when you go places, at bedtime, and in the morning. Remember, we belong to God. Moses was right. The people told their children stories about God while they kept traveling. They were moving to a new country, and they were God's family. So friends, the Israelites left Egypt and traveled through the wilderness for 40 years before finally reaching their new land. Now they were starting a new part of their journey and God wanted to make sure that they remembered they were part of God's family. God told Moses to tell the people to teach their children all about God and God's family when they were home and when they were away, when they woke up in the morning and when they went to bed at night. To help them remember, God's people back in the day would write important verses on small scrolls, and they would attach the scrolls to their hands or even to their foreheads, but most of the time on their doorposts. Today, we're going to make a scroll 
from a sentence in today's story. So you can either ask your parents to print. Let me see if I have it here. I do. So you can ask your parents to print this um, piece of paper that I sent to them in their email. Or um, if you want to hold on for a second, I will post this and you can just copy it on a piece of blank white paper. Um, uh, if your parents have it, 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 I sent it to them. It's called uh, Love God Scroll, and, and they can print that off for you. Um, or we can just post it here, and you can copy it on your piece of paper. And if this is what you're going to do, then go ahead and hit pause uh, until you finish writing it down, and then uh, hit play, and, um, and, and then we'll... Um, move on with the project. Okay, guys, now that you have your uh, sheet of paper with uh, love God with everything you say, think, and do, we're going to do a couple different things. Before we do anything with this, what you're going to need to do is grab a glass of cold water and a tea bag. Ask your, ask your mom or dad for a tea bag, and you're going to let it soak uh, for a minute or two in the cold water. Now, while we're doing, while we're waiting for that, um, you can go ahead and draw. Uh, if you, if you want to draw some of the Christian symbols we talked about, uh, such as the, um, you can draw a cross. A cross is really easy to draw. Um, or you can, like me, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and trace my shell on here, or you can just, obviously you can just kind of freestyle what you think a shell looks like and, um, and draw some lines that come out, maybe add a little color to my shell. I'm moving pretty quick, but you can take as much time as you want doing this. Another Christian symbol that I didn't mention before is actually the fish. Um, the fish, back in the early, early days when Jesus first was resurrected and um, the disciples were starting churches, um, they used the symbol of a fish um, to represent their community. And um, actually the cross, which we would have thought would have been one of the first symbols, actually came much later. Um, the, the biggest symbol that identified uh, Jesus and his community was the fish. So anyway, th this is going to become my scroll. Um, what I'm going to do now is take the tea bag out of the cold water and uh, you're going to want to have some paper towels uh, close by and I'm going to squeeze squeeze it over the glass. I, I want to um, get it somewhat not dry but uh, not soaking wet either. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dab dab my paper with the uh, tea bag and what that's going to do is give it a little bit of a stain to it. It's going to turn it a little bit yellow uh, because of the tea bag. And the reason we're doing that is because scrolls um, back in the day would show a lot of wear and tear. They look old. If you've ever seen a scroll, and I'm going to show you in a minute, um, they, they're yellowed because of the amount of time that's gone by. And so the tea bag just ages ages your paper. You can do both sides if you want. I didn't get mine. Mine's not wet enough. You might have to um, get it just a little bit wetter um, so that it's leaving a little bit of a yellow yellow stain. And it will um, it will become more yellow as your paper dries. So give it a little Fan it, fan it dry. And what you're going to do is scrolls 
back in the day were on a post, like a, a wood post, but they were rolled, rolled up. So you can go ahead and roll, roll your paper. And if you have a piece of string, if you have a piece of string or a piece of yarn or um, a piece of ribbon, um, you're just going to want to tie a knot uh, in the middle here, just like you would tie your shoe. And you don't have to tie it too tight, just enough to um, keep it from unrolling. Okay. And there you go. You have a you have a scroll with on the inside our our one of our favorite verses uh, for you to remember. And um, what you can do is if your string is long enough, um, I'm going to tie this onto my doorpost here at the church uh, in front of my office. Uh, so that when people come uh, pay me a visit, they'll ask me, you know, hey, what's that hanging on your door? And I can tell them all about this verse and why it's important. And uh, one of the reasons it is important is that it reminds us that um, that that God um, asks us to love to love God with all our hearts, minds, and spirit, with everything we are. We are to love God. So there I have a loop big enough to um, hang on my doorpost. So I'm going to do that when we are done here. Um, and that's that's the project I have uh, for us today. Um, I did send other uh, sheets that you can do. And also, if um, if you don't want to mess around with the tea, uh, the tea bag and everything, um, and, and you can't find straight... Just um, you know, color color your picture um, with some of the Christian symbols, or if you just want to um, color whatever you want on it, and then just hang it up. You don't have to you don't have to roll it up uh, like I did on mine. Um, I was just kind of doing something that I thought would be a little bit uh, fun to uh, get people to ask you, well, hey, what's what's in that? Or you can also you can also give it uh, away as a gift. Also, see, it's even already got a ribbon on it. So anyway, before we go, I also want to share with you some other papers that I sent with the lesson. So uh, if you would like, um, attached is a, a family activity sheet that you can do with your family uh, after class and throughout the week. There's different activities uh, that you can do. Uh, one of them uh, might be kind of fun. It's um, looking around your house for symbols, Christian symbols. Uh, maybe you have a family Bible or you have a cross at home. See if you can find some of those things. Um, and always ask your parents to go with you when you're looking for items in the house. Uh, for our younger uh, students, we have a coloring sheet. Um, this is Moses teaching the children. And then a little bit more challenging, we have a word search. Um, the words are over here. Um, so you can uh, give that a try also. And uh, there is an answer sheet that goes with it, uh, but try and do the worksheet on your own uh, first. Okay. So before we go, why don't we gather our hearts and minds together for a word of prayer. And just like before, I'm going to say a phrase, and I want you to finish that phrase. Uh, you're going to say, Thank you, God. And you'll know. You'll know when to say it. I'll say it too. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, for sisters and brothers, thank you, God. For fathers and mothers, thank you, God. For all our teachers, thank you, God. For neighbors we know, thank you, God. For others we don't. Thank you, God. For all your family, thank you, God. They're our family too. Thank you, God. For loving and keeping us, thank you, God. We all thank you. And let us all say together, Amen. Friends, it has been great to be with you today, and I hope you have a wonder filled week that is just filled with God's blessings and love. Stay safe and be well. 
And until next time, bye for now.